Well, hello everybody and welcome back for another weekend look around these yard and gardens. I am uh, just so impressed with how things have been doing this year, but it's amazing to me that it's already the 9th of August and where has 2020 gone? Absolutely incredible. Can't say that I got much of a pepper harvest this year, so I mean obviously that's going to be a little disappointing in the winter, but thankfully I've still got lots of peppers left from previous year's harvest, so you know, losing the aphid wars this year. I'll get over it, I'll get over it. What I do have is a lot of spaghetti squash coming in this year, so let's get started in the Three Sisters Garden. So pleased with how well these spaghetti squash are doing. Now these are seeds saved from a grocery store squash. We grew um, a crop out of them a few years ago and then continued to save those original seeds. These are not from the ones that we regrew, so we should be okay as far as the quality of the squash they're going to produce. But look at the size of this thing. I'm pretty sure that's a lot bigger than what we would have purchased at the store for just the two of us, especially considering we would have been cooking that in a toaster oven. So it's kind of gotten a little bit of a creamy yellowish color to it. I mean, barely yellow, but we'll call it cream. Um, and Shocks and I are both of the opinion that that sucker is probably more than enough to feed the two of us. So I'm thinking very strongly about snipping that off and letting it harden because if we trace this vine, this other spaghetti squash is also coming off this same vine. So I'm wondering, is it like cucumbers? And if I take that one on the left off, Will the one on the right grow better? Will it start to produce myrrh, more, myrrh, more further on down the line? Like, I don't know, I don't really see a loss in taking this off now. So I'm really happy to say that today will be our first few spaghetti squash harvested because we're gonna get that one. And then we've also, over here by my shadow, we got this one here, which really is a lot closer to the size that um, the two of us will consume. So if it can put the energy into additional squash instead of a larger squash than we can eat, that seems like it's probably the way to go. We can see behind it here, there are a few more spaghetti squash just right there, ready to go. And if we pan over, we can see at least two on the boards over the pond. And behind there, there's one or two in there. So I think we've got good numbers and it's probably safe enough to start pulling them. There's one in there. We have had quite a few of them, unfortunately, die off on us. Let's see if I can find an example of that. Um, there's one in there, it's kind of died off on us. Hopefully you can see that. But all in all, We've got some really, really nice keepers, so I really can't complain about that. The only thing I could complain about with the Three Sisters Garden this year is how hard it has gotten to harvest beans from the middle of all that. I went in for some a couple of days ago and I'm pretty sure I broke a pumpkin vine, pretty sure I broke a couple of bean plants, got a nice pile of beans out of it and there's still loads more of them in there, but I'm certain I did damage. So spreading this out a little bit more next year or maybe putting the beans on either end and letting the squash move in the other direction might be the way to modify this. Haven't quite decided. Was doing a tour this morning though and lo and behold, that sure looks like a pumpkin start to me. And I was looking along the line here and found a few more. Of course, can't now that I've got the camera out. And my shadow's not helping things either, I'm sure, but, oh, there's hiding under this leaf. Nice one in there. I mean, they're not huge, right? Like I've said before, these are baby sugar pie pumpkins, so they're never gonna be all that big, but they will be glorious and tasty. Now this corn looks like maybe starting to, to do something for me there. Got some nice length to it. The ends kind of look like they might have been pollinated, so we'll see. All you can really do is hope, right, once the season gets started. S pumpkins, I was gonna say squash again, but just going nuts here. Spreading right out from the garden. 
crawling on down. And I know I found a couple of small ones in here. If you look up, you might be able to see it just kind of in there. There's a little pumpkin. Looking at the potato patch, looking a little miserable, kind of flopped, but the pumpkins are kind of growing in amongst it. So I'm a little hesitant to muck, muck about with it too much. And as long as they're still green on these potatoes, I'm thinking I'll just let them grow and uh, we'll harvest when they die off or, you know, frost comes and I've got no choice. So yeah, out here in West Man, that seems to be one of the things that determines for me is when that frost comes, I'm done. But I guess that's the case everywhere. It just happens to feel like the frost arrives ever so much sooner here. Ah, there it is. Looking around, trying to find the nicer specimen of pumpkin that I've got. I think pretty sure that's the largest one. It's definitely the largest one I can find. So that one there, maybe a couple more inches. And that's going to be about it. I mean, like I say, not a huge pumpkin, but oh, so tasty. Can't really see into the beans too much here. Nothing but corn and squash leaves, a few thistles. But there are beans in there. And uh, we're back to the spaghetti squash here. This thing is just spreading right out. Well, look under there and <gasps> treasure. So many of them. So the spaghetti squash definitely did well for us this year. We'll get many, many meals out of it. And uh, what an amazing investment, considering it's seeds from something we ate years ago, already grew a crop of, now we're growing another crop of. And yeah, we still have seeds from that initial dinner. Right on. Looking into the tomato patch, I'm seeing more and more of those glorious green marbles. And I really don't know if they're gonna ripen up in time, but there are about 101 things that you can do with green tomatoes, so. Oh, what do we got on there? Is that a, oh good, I thought that was cracked for a second there. So far, they're all looking healthy. Didn't think I was gonna get away with saying that for a second there, but apparently I'm still good. So far, they're all still looking healthy. I don't see any purple in these back ones yet. I don't see any red, but it does sure seem like the onions are doing well in amongst the tomatoes. The tomatoes are doing well with a few onions in them. And yeah, it has definitely been a nice, productive patch. Here's that dill. Oh yeah, such a pretty plant. Up here in the Better Boys, I see just loads of them. It's gonna be an incredible harvest, even if they are only green. Looking here at the Sweet Juliet, it's got a nice cluster on there. And then while rummaging through here with shocks, found a few, I'm gonna pan past my shadow here again, on, I believe this is a grape tomato variety. Look at the size of the cluster there, right? Like that is huge. And there are some that are a little more developed, but they're kind of under things right now. So with the camera, it's a little awkward to get to, but there's a few more of them there. Some larger tomatoes back there. And then, you know, I could just like pan up and if you spend enough time looking, they are everywhere. Ones I'm most hopeful for early color on would be these broad ripples. Just love the clustering on these. There's a cluster, there's a cluster, there's a cluster, there's a cluster, there's a cluster. But way down here, the heart of it all, we have the original cluster is not yet going a delightful golden yellowy on me. But we'll get there. It's the 9th of August, but it's only the 9th. So oh, a couple more clusters. All of this off one seed, one plant. Like that is a beautifully productive plant. Fantastic return on investment. I mean, if you were to plant every single seed in just one tomato, you could fill this whole garden patch with just the broad ripples here. And it's a short season tomato, so I might, I might actually do something like that next year. We'll see. It's um, going to be a little crazy next year because with the tiller, I've got the opportunity to open up more garden space in one season than ever before. 
and uh, I really like to do that you know I've cut down quite a few trees I've opened up a lot more sunshine not quite enough but you know opened up a lot more and even then when I did the tomato grove here a few years ago we did all right we got some production there's definitely more light now you can see gaps through those trees so that that is a good start I guess we'll wrap today up with a look at this Calancho. This was the Dungeon Calancho. And uh, most of these, are, I don't know, probably 15 solo cup cuttings that all got shoved into this one planter because I was under the impression that these plants, um, well, made the soil toxic to other plants. However, since it's been out in the sunshine, we have a tomato that is sprouting up amongst that. I don't even know what this long leaf is, but um, healthy, whatever it is. Is that Queen Anne's lace or carrot of some kind? Is that cilantro? I don't know. But I, I don't think that um, other plants are really having a problem growing in here. So that is kind of fascinating. This plant probably is going to come in again in the winter time. Um, it did have a bit of an aphid situation, but I think that's mostly because it was beside all of those really infested uh, pepper seedlings. So I'm hoping when I bring it in, it will be okay. Now I'm probably going to take these randoms out. But at the same time, well, maybe the tomato anyway. At the same time, if they want to grow, maybe I'll just let them grow. Because, I mean, that lace leaf kind of looks nice in there. Maybe somebody can let me know if they know what that is and uh, whether or not I should pull it. All right. So another week come and gone, another week closer to harvest. It is just crazy this year. But, uh, you know, I really hope you're all well out there. And I really appreciate you all sticking with me. No peppers this year, but it's been an interesting one for the Three Sisters Garden, and it has been fascinating as far as uh, that little tomato patch. Actually, I say no peppers, but I do have those zombie peppers, so they sort of kind of count, and it still looks like we might get some pods off there. So with a little luck, there might still be the opportunity to watch me burn my face off this year. We're just going to have to, you know, hope, wish, pray, dream, whatever you go for for that particular plant. And on that note, I hope hope you all have an absolutely fantastic week ahead. Much love to you all and I will see you next time.